Welcome, Yane Snee, to Coaching in Session. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Thanks for having me. I'm blessed. Of course. Today, we're going to have you on as a mindset life coach. We're going to be getting into some of your work in just a moment. But what got you into this whole aspect of mindset? Because mindset is one of those things that is always evolving. Think about when we were a teenager, right? We had egos. We knew it all. We're running away from home. Maybe I don't know if that was you. We have a different mindset, but then we mature. We grow up. We're in our 20s. Maybe you're starting to be more career focused. And then maybe you start to think about family. Our mindset is shifting. And I know the work that you do, because I am also a mindset coach, is closely related to helping people with their mindsets of all different ages and all different walks of life. Tell the world who you are, what you do, and how you help them. Yeah. I, I'm going to start with the first question that you had asked. Why exactly mindset I'm doing with life coaching? Because life coaching is a, a general thing, but I do focus on the mind. Because I do believe that we we live in this world, like you said, as ever evolving and ever changing. But I, for some reason, our mind keep us in the past, keep us trapped, keep us chained. And not only that, it, our behavior is, I would say, influenced by how we perceive the world. So getting a hold of your mindset and challenging your thought processes so you can be a healthy human being in this world that we live in is very important. So I did get into that aspect of it, because in my own past, which I will share after I mentioned this, in my own past, I have seen the work I have done from what I have went through in my childhood, which was trauma, and how I evolved to be in this healthy mind state. And it is because of the, of my mind growing through all of that trauma. Some don't grow through that trauma or don't know how to. The mind, starting with the mind first, is more, very important when we start to, like you said, move through adolescence into adulthood but if we're trapped into childhood or our childhood traumas then we really can't grow and function and flourish the way we need to be and that and me getting into my mindset life coach came from my childhood traumas i was mentally emotionally abused by my mom i was mentally emotionally abused and sexually abused by my dad and that helped that hindered me in a lot of things that i went through i had mommy and daddy issues as i, I got older and i didn't really know how to cope with that and I really didn't have a lot of friends. I did a lot of therapy sessions, but therapy wasn't helping me. They really just checked off list after list and see where I fit in to tighten me a certain thing. They tightened me as having borderline personality disorder because of my childhood trauma that I have experienced. But none of what they did helped me. It was just basically an experiment that failed because they didn't really talk to me, grow me, really get down to the deep part of why I feel the way I feel or why I see the world the way I see it. And I didn't really know how or why I saw the world the way I saw it. All I know, I was going through a lot of stuff when I was little. I had a lot of trauma that I couldn't get through. There was not really a lot of support system in my life to really mold me into the individual that I am and that I'm now embodying. And I changed and helped my own self grow to where I'm at right now which I absolutely love because it took a long time for me to get to this point. And that's why I harvest so much on the mind because the mind is really challenging to really be that healthy individual that you want to be. And I found out about life coaching way after college, uh, matter of fact, and I knew I wanted to help individuals. I just didn't know how. My mom wasn't really one that helped me explore the possibilities that's in this world or what jobs and different things. I was told either military or college. So I chose college after high school. And I really didn't want to go to college. I felt that wasn't where I was at. Uh, this was during a time where I was trying to find my purpose and identity. And I lost it tremendously in high school because there was no support system, adult support system for me to grow. After college is when I started my mindset life coaching business in 2022. And I just really fell into it. Like I said, I didn't really know life coaching was a thing. Until I started looking on YouTube and podcasts and I had saw interviews of this type of area of expertise. So I was like, wow, you know, I can actually do that because this is what I do on a daily basis when I was a social worker. So I went into that in 2022 and I found my belonging and my purpose. And I grew because of that journey of trying to find out where I fit in this world. And that's what landed me to mindset life coaching. Well, let's paint a picture and this picture is not your life, but let's just say this is a general life 
for most people, right? They don't have a severe issue growing up. They have good parents, good mom and dad. And let's say, you know, we have our dual income parents, right? That's going to be common for a lot of people. Mom and dad are working, especially in this economy, or the kids are going to be learning from their friends, from teachers, and they're going to be learning from mom and dad, right? They're there. But again, Mom and dad check out sometimes when they get home from work, they're burnt out, they're tired, they're fatigued, you name it. Do you think that our current system right now, even if a child has all the good things, right? A loving family, supportive teachers. Do you think that even if they had all that, by the time they leave high school, do you think they would be equipped to handle the real world? That's a loaded question. <laughs> I would say it depends on the details. That the pretty picture of having all those things, a loving mom, a loving dad, a good school system, maybe for the one percenters, they may can get out of that hole that life has, that life just brings out of people. They, possibly. I personally know that that's not the world we live in, especially if you're referring to having dual parents in the household and coming home after five and six and being very tired to have to go to an energetic child after they come home from school to then probably just sit in their board in school to have to come home with a lot of energy and then have to go right back the next day to the same school system. I don't believe in that there's a, a really good, strong school system. I could be biased, but I am an advocate. I was an advocate for the injustice system in where I was at in Essex County, Newark, New Jersey. And I saw how I won't knock school, but I, I have seen that school can be better um, in terms of raising kids. So your question, if they can have the, a good front in life right after high school, like I said in the details, I personally don't, don't believe that because I have seen what the effects that school has and having dual parents in the household. Now, if they super mom parents and dads and the, and the school system is doing right, like I said, a one percent is sure, but it's not many one percenters that I, I have seen as a boatload that say that kids are ready after school, after high school. And you're right. The education system does not prepare kids for the real world. And what typically happens with life coaches, mindset coaches, one of the things they realize quite frequently and readily is that the people that they're working with are coming out with a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, a lot of history of trauma in, in their childhood years or teen years. They might have tried therapy. Therapy doesn't necessarily work. It's just about talking about your emotions and your feelings. And it could be a good thing to do if you don't know where these emotions are coming from. But then when you finally get there, what do you do about it? And therapists, you know, doctors in general are going to say, well, now that we have diagnosed you, now we have a limit in our mind. Now we have something that we can like uh, give you some medication for, we can give you the easy out. But when it comes to truly helping someone push through their life to the next stage, they need that adversity. So now let's change the picture again. Let's say that instead of having a perfect upbringing, right, we had a chaotic upbringing. But during that upbringing, we had a strong mentor, like a life coach, a mindset coach, right? They were helping us there along the way, regardless of our bad parents, regardless of the school system. Would that make a difference? Absolutely. I, like I said, I could be biased, but I do believe that life coaching are better than therapists. I do believe life coaching are better than doctors. Um, I, I, the reason why I say that 100% because I came from a social work background and I believe life coaching is better than social work. Life coaching really starts where that client is or that consumer or whatever, who you're talking to, that individual, that human is. So regardless of what outside forces is around, life coaching really helps the individual work internally versus externally. You don't need pills. You don't need medication. Maybe sometimes because the level of anxiety may be high, so you do need something to probably calm it down. But, when, but after that pill, you still have to deal with life circumstances and your situations. So that's where life coaching come in at. They help you based on where you're at at that moment and then have tools and, and tricks and stuff to help you move along individually instead of just giving you a pill and say, okay, we sedated you or we, we have this as a limitation perspective of how I see you, so this is how I'm going to move about you. But life coaching takes away the titles, takes away everything, and then focus on that individual and where they at. And I do believe, regardless of your background, good or bad, life coaching is there to help you move forward to be the best authentic self possible. Let me ask you a couple of questions. And these are like quick ones, and then we're going to get into the conversation, or I'm going to get into the conversation. 
Do you like pizza? <laughs> yes, pepperoni. Okay, okay, pepperoni pizza. Do you like pineapple pizza? No. Have you ever tried pineapple pizza? I have. And no. Okay. <laughs> I like to look at like when we look at therapy, social work, life coaching, mindset coaching, right? In in general, as to different flavors that someone can have. So someone might like pepperoni pizza. Someone might like pineapple pizza. And even though essentially they're all pizza, it's a different taste. It's a different flavor, right? So you just have a different perspective when it comes to what is your favorite pizza. You have a different liking. And you don't necessarily know that you don't like pineapple pizza unless you try. Now you can, you know, make a educated guess saying, you know what? I don't think I like sweet and savory together. And you could say, I want to stay away from that. Maybe you don't like anchovies on pizza because it's salty, too salty. You don't, you want to stay away from that. So you kind of can feel of what is for you. But today, a lot of people, they don't know what they want. A lot of people, they don't know their purpose. They don't know what their passions are. Like just because they do something and they kind of like it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's their passion. They don't know what their gifts are. They don't know their zone of genius. There's all of these issues in our world today where people are not sure in what they like and what they should be gravitating for or toward. This is now the whole aspect of which is their pizza and they have to try it out. I know people who have tried, you know, therapist, social worker, they kind of like it. But then when they want to get down to business, they come to a life coach because they understand it is a different dynamic. And sometimes it's like a stepping block where let's say you're going to the gym and you're not going to go on the treadmill and, you know, bring that bad boy up to 15 miles an hour and start running, right? You're going to probably start at 3.5, go from there, maybe go five, maybe make your way up to seven that same day, but then that's it. And so we have a small incline or an incremental step process for us to get there. Sometimes it could be difficult for the mind when we just jump, you know, jump ship because there's that fear. Like, I don't know what this is going to be. And for people who have stepped into therapy, I have found that it's easier for them to step into coaching versus if they don't have any type of background of self-help or trying to go seek help from a medical professional. We are not medical professionals. We are just people who understand the mind. We understand what it is to have goals and to want to reach those goals every single day. And having someone who can hold you accountable is going to be that, I guess you can say, that savior for a lot of people because we have a lot of distractions in our world. And a lot of people think, oh, you know, I'm just going to, you know, try this out, try this out. And before they know it, they're, you know, in a job because of circumstance. Maybe they have kids, they have a house now, a car, no, and they stay stuck. Now that we understand that there is a difference between the different types of coaches and medical professionals that can help an individual. Now we get into the aspect of commitment because when it comes to coaching and being accountable, it's very different than if you just sit down with someone and talk about your emotions all day. When you leave, there's not much commitment. Maybe you write in your journal, but even if that, you know, like what is that going to do? Because it's just something you're just kind of trying to get your emotions off on instead of saying, okay, where does my mind need to be? Where do I want to be? People, when it comes to therapy and social work is, I don't want to feel this anymore. Well, what do you want to feel? This is the next step. Or how do you help people get to that step of understanding what it is they truly desire? Yes. To start, I get to know the individual first. Like you said, some don't know who they um what they want or who they want to become. So I start with like, well, who are you now? And sometimes they come in, I have a lot of anxiety, you know, I got some depression issues, I have family relationship dynamics. Okay, well, how do you see yourself? What is your happiness? What is that happy place that you see yourself maybe five or ten years down the line? Oh, I see myself at this good job. Oh, I see myself building this confidence up. Oh, I see this, or oh, I see that. Okay, that's where I start with um the small goals. Um, depending on what the individual wants. So they say, I want to be happy. Okay, what's your happiness look like? I want to have more friends. Oh, I want to go out. I don't want to be scared. Okay, let's do something small. Let's go to a coffee shop. Let's go to a poetry show. Let's do small things that get you to feel more confident. Um, that's where I, I basically start from first. And then it kind of build on top of that because we, I can't go to someone who has public speaking issues and say, go on the main stage and do that. If I have someone have public speaking issues, I say, okay, let's go in front of your friends and family. Let's go into maybe your coworkers. 
Let's build confidence up so we can get you to where you want to be. And down the line, it does change, especially when I, I have someone who's willing to make that change and they see, okay, maybe that wasn't it. Maybe I didn't want to do that. But I was entertained by that and something sparked an interest in this direction or this direction. Okay, well, let's explore that. And eventually we get to a point when I, I'm in my sessions with them, they're like, okay, well, I feel more fitted in this area. Okay, well, let's build on this part of your area that you that you want to focus on. And then we can we can grow from there. So I just basically start with who they are and then how or what do they see themselves at uh, a year from now or five years from now. So it definitely uh, varies based on the individual. But I start from that point first because I can't start from the big scene and then, you know, go backwards because some people don't do that. You just work from first, second, third and build it up that way. So I do my session is based on small gradual steps towards a bigger goal, depending on what that individual needs. When we were young, you know, we would be outside riding our bikes, getting bit by, you know, bit bit by, by mosquitoes and playing video games and stuff. But not like today. Today is more of we are inside watching TV all day. I have a playground by my house and I see very little amounts of children playing in those playgrounds and on the basketball court. Now, I know on the weekend, if I go to the bigger one that's just right down the road, I see a good amount of kids playing, having a good time. But then I say that this is not even a fraction of how many children are in this city. And it's because most of them give themselves this idea of seclusion. I'm going to be this lone warrior. I'm going to fight this fight by myself. And one of the reasons why many people do that is because they're never told or, or taught to ask for help. If you think about school, we have been secluded you know we have our own little desk right we have our we have our tests and then you know we can't cheat on the test so we're making sure we're hiding our test papers we don't want anyone to look at our test right but we're looking around because we don't know the answer we're trying to get some help but we were always i guess you can say indoctrinated in a sense to do this by ourselves so then finally when they are you know 18 19 right they're trying to figure out their life they don't know what to do because they have been told you have to figure it out for yourself, right? No one's going to come save you. And life coaching is not about Superman or Superwoman coming to save you and helping you. It's about understanding that you're stuck and you need assistance. If you have a flat tire or you have multiple flat tires, so even your spare is not going to help you, you have to call for help. You're not going to just stand on the side of the road and say, well, let's figure out if something happens, you know, something good happens. You can, you know, maybe you get lucky. Maybe a police officer can stop and say, hey, do you need help? Call a tow truck for you. Maybe a good Samaritan who has the same vehicle as you gives you their spare. I mean, we can have these probabilities, but they're so low. But many people, they bet on those low probabilities. They stay still. They stay stagnant. They stay in comfort. How can we start to get people to be more proactive to seek help when they're struggling? Yeah, good question. The first part I want to say is the uh, reaching out for help. That wasn't always like that. When we were younger, we would always say, you know, if you need help, go ask your teacher. You know, if you need help, you got to speak up for yourself. You know, you have to say something. And then somewhere down the line, it, it went to figure it out on your own. And that's pretty strange to me because I don't believe that once we reach a certain age, that we have to be all hands off from those that supposed to still guide us and lead us. And that's one of the reasons why kids these days don't feel adequate enough and confident enough to go out in that real world because no one held their hand until they felt confident enough to do so. That is a, a first thing that's really important. The schools don't do that enough. We, we feel like, hey, you're in high school, good luck. And it's like, no, these are still kids. Just because they're in high school, just because they're now about to graduate and go out into the quote unquote real world, they're still adulting. They're just like a college student. We're all still adulting. No such thing as an age defining you to now all of a sudden your maturity and your perspective on life has changed and no one really guided you or opened your mindset up to the life and, and, and experiences of life. It's like being born and saying, you have to walk now. And it's like, well, can I crawl first before I walk? Who's going to hold my hand after graduation and make sure that transition is good for me? So that's the reason, that's one of the reasons why we have kids now saying, I don't, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. I'm clueless. And to answer your second part of that, what to do with a lost child or lost individual at all, 
I would just say stay in the moment. Stay completely in the moment. It is devastating and it's, it's going to be rough when you're when you're told, all right, it's your turn, because that's what happens to me. Like I said, my mom told me I had to either choose military or college and figure it out. And I fell hard in my behind because you can't just uh, tell a child to go off into the world or go swim in the ocean full of sharks and expect them to swim if they didn't wasn't taught to swim. So it's definitely hard. And I had to stay in the moment a lot. And I had to keep myself organized on the things that I need to keep myself organized off the, to be above water, so to speak, so I won't drown. And I would say the same thing about you know any individual that's lost or looking for purpose or belonging or have identity issues or just crisis of what do I do next? It's just basically stay in a moment. For instance, if you're graduating, you know, high school, I would like to hope you have some steps in plan when it comes to college or military or trade or something to keep you you're moving. But I, I will also say is don't focus on the future. The future is never here. That's one, that's one of the things that I tell my clients. And I also say that the past is going and never will return. You only have right now. If you do feel just, I have no clue, I would just basically say stay in a moment and get yourself organized. If it's trying to do that next step for you, is it a job? If, if it's housing, if it's trying to find money, if it's got pregnant after high school, what is it that's going to need you to keep moving forward? Um, and that's why I speak a lot when it comes to my clients as well. It's called resilience, emotional resilience. Just keep yourself mentally mentally in a moment and with full of clarity uh, on the next steps and organize. Don't get overwhelmed because that's the trade of being overwhelmed, filled with anxiety, depression. That's the trade of growth. I try to teach my clients to stay in a moment because we can get overwhelmed and distracted with a lot of stuff that we need to do at one time, especially when you don't even know how to do it. Like I said before, I didn't really know how to. To keep myself in the moment and keep myself uh, organized on those next steps. So say for instance, like I said, you're going to high school. All right, my next step would be college or a trade. I lost my job. Okay, let me stay in the moment right now. I can't do anything about the lost job. Let me stay in the moment right now. Let me find another job. Let me get on welfare, whatever the case may be in your environment and then move forward that way, calculate and measurable. Don't, and that's another thing I wanna speak on too that just hit me, being measurable as well with your organization and your goals. You don't want to say you want to get to 10 and you're not there yet. So just being present in what you have to do now and don't focus on the future or past. Mm -hmm. And just sometimes just focusing on the aspect of the next step, because if you are tired, if you're burned out, if frustrated, if you have all of these negativities on top of you, it is hard to move. The people who fall into depression these people, you know, they have a plethora of emotions going on. They might be angry. They might be sad. They're confused. They have a lot of stuff going on. But also what they have done, and maybe they did this unconsciously, is that they stop moving. They stop making any progress. They just, you know, sit down and they just say, well, you know, I'll do it when I feel better or I'll do it when there's the right time. And there is no right time, you know, make sure that you have the life that you're supposed to have. Many people they will wait for happiness. They will look for happiness in all the wrong places. And then they'll wonder why they're not having a good life. They'll wonder why they are miserable, why they are irritable, while you know maybe they have bad relationships. And I'm not only talking about like boyfriend, girlfriend relationships. I'm talking about with friends and coworkers and things along those lines. We have that negativity. And one of the last questions I want to talk about is the mindset of positivity. Can a person have a negative mind and grow, or does it always have to be positive at every moment they're trying to move forward? Always, every moment trying to move forward. You have to have positivity. You can't function negativity. That's, that's one of the things I, I tell my clients as well. I say, I'd rather you be in victimhood than victimhood. I'd rather you be your best friend and your worst enemy, because there's no one in this world. I don't care if you came into this world saying that you have twins, you was birthed through your mom solo and then your twin king. So you're going to be by yourself and you have to be your best friend regardless. And that's your, your mom state. I was very bad with my negative thought process when I was told I wasn't going to graduate high school, college or my sperm donor or my dad, I should say. I was really lost because I kept filtering those things over and over again in my head, nonstop, like a, like a broken record, over and over again in my head. And I didn't help myself out. I was self-sabotaging myself. I was leaning into those negative thoughts that I wasn't nothing, that I wasn't going to graduate. I was leaning into them heavy. Did it help me? Not at all. And I know we can't look around and say, well, if everybody said I'm this, then I must be that. 
their thoughts don't matter. Only thing that matters to you, and it's also what I tell my clients, is what you tell yourself. That's the only thing that matters to you. So if you say that you're ugly, if you say that you're not smart, words have, have energy. We, I'm very spiritual. So if you put out there a certain thing, the energy, the universe is going to fill off of what you say and give it right back to you. So if you say, I'm strong, I am powerful, I am anointed, I am blessed, I am favored, I am smart, I will get this dream job. You speak in a future tense, I am this, I will this, and not and not any negative thoughts, then yeah, you're going to be, regardless of what, what you see in your life, you're going to look for those silver linings in your life that are going to prove to you what you're trying to get out into the world. Someone says that I'm stupid and I'm leaning into that. Well, then I'm going to look for those negative things out in this world. And then my perception, my behavior, how I internalize things, I'm going to react off of that. And it's not going to be the reaction that's going to put me in a healthy mind state. Versus me saying, I am awesome. I am amazing. I am intellectual. I am positive. I am a good friend. I am a good human. Well, I'm going to look for those things and that is going to fill me up that I'm going to embody and move forward in life, regardless of what goes on around me, I know internally who I am. Therefore, nothing outside will hinder my growth because I'm speaking positivity inside of me, regardless of what everybody else say. There's always the aspect of the ratio of positive and negative. So they say you need three positives to cancel out one negative. Some studies go up to seven. You need seven positives to cancel out one negative. And it depends on the negativity. Who says it? If you're saying it, you know, how do you say it? When do you say it? There's going to be differences in that. I know David Goggins, I'm sure you're familiar with the man. He uses negativity in a sense to turn himself into a positive result. He says, you know, stop being a little B word, stop being a little whatever. And you would think, right, you know, these words, you know, if anyone called you that, you would, you would say that's negative. This is negative for me. You know, you don't want to be called that. But at the same time, it ignites something within you. And the reason I say that is because most people, they don't take action until they have a trauma in their life. They have something bad happen. They want to fix. Look at all the people who spend all their time building up career. Now they're 40, 50 years old. They have all these health problems because they haven't been taking care of the body. They spend all the money that they have been building and making to get their health back. Their priorities weren't straight. In a sense, they're doing something positive. They got something negative. That negativity or that negative moment of the doctor's note or some bad news, maybe they had cancer, they have diabetes now, there's something going on, they wake up. Negativity can be a powerful tool, but it's something that you shouldn't necessarily lean on saying, I'm so stupid, because that can probably, in that context, can bring you down. And we want to elevate you, not bring you down. I know there's a lot of people who look at negativity in a different light too. I will argue <laughs> that what he did, okay, he may seem like it was a negative thing, but I do that. And I don't consider that being negative. I will consider that being more of an empowerment thing. Hey, I don't want to be this, so let me be this. That's how I see it. Because there's one point where, you know, I'm you know, speaking, and I'm like, this is a lot of audience. Don't be a punk, Yane. You're not a punk. Come on, you got this. You got this. To me, that's not negative, but he can phrase it that way. We, it, it's all. It's okay that I'm not knocking anybody who's phrased anything that way. But I just think more of empowerment. It's like, hey, you don't want to be this. You already know what, what that takes you. Won't you be that? And I think that is when it comes down to, like you said, not leaning into it, but more acknowledging it and then doing the opposite. So like I say with my clients, if you're scared of something, then do a small goal so you can face that fear. And I think that's really what more of what we have to do is to say, hey, you know, I am this and just being realistic with it, but I want to be that. And then being committed to be the opposite of what you, a negative trait that you have. We all have negativity, negative traits, I say, that we don't like about ourselves, but I don't know, we, should, we, we can't flip it. I like the way he does that to, to flip, hey, I don't want to be this, so let me be that. Yeah, I can see how he does that, which is a great thing. I just choose to lean on the side of positivity because it gives more, it bears more fruit because you lean, when you lean into something, that means you're giving your all and saying that you're more wonderful than saying your negative side. I don't know, for me, I, I like to lean more into that, but you know, teach his own. And how can people find you? Yeah, so I have a website. Yanesne.com. That is Y A H N E S N E E D.com. Facebook is Phoenix by Yanesne. TikTok and Instagram is my business name, which is Relentless Phoenix 00. 
the zero zero is for the Femi sign, always beginning, never ending. And you am also about to have a podcast come out shortly next month called Relentless Venus Podcast, where I'll be talking about, you know, a whole bunch of mindset, life coaching dynamics there and also other great topics. So definitely look out for those things. But you can follow me on those other media sites. Perfect. And I'll make it easy for everyone. All the links are going to be in the description box below so people can easily find you, follow you. It's going to be there for them to uh, inquire about everything that you're doing and everything you've done. And it's important to always figure out, you know, what is your cup of tea? I always say this because there's so many coaches. Coaching and Session is a platform where I bring on hundreds of coaches at this point. I've interviewed hundreds of individuals and everyone has a different, unique personality. And so when you're finding the coach that is for you, you have to find the right coach. David Goggins, like we were talking about, is not going to be the right coach for everybody, right? It's a small minority of people that want David to be their coach because they understand the work that's involved. And some people, you know, might just want, you know, level one or two, not level 10. Depending on what you want, where you are, you know, find the coach that fits your personality, find the coach that's going to be there to help and support you. And, and then of course, from there, keep that positive mind and always aim for your goals. And then one day, if you remain consistent, they will come true. Thank you so much, Yane, for coming on, spending some time and talking about your work.